So good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to today's webinar, um, which is on breach defense. So protecting what's now and what's next. Um, so today um, uh, on the call or on this webinar, I suppose, um, you know, we've got a couple of my colleagues. So my name is Ishan Karatane. And I'm a technical solution uh, specialist for within cloud security. Um, we've got my colleague here, Senad, who's a technical solutions architect, and Yusuf um, Khan, who's also one of my other colleagues, who's on Q and A today. So, of course, any other, you know, any questions you have, please do post them in the Q and A, um, in the Q and A box or chat, and you know, more than happy to get back to you with uh, um, with with some of your questions with some answers. So, you know, kind of one of the key questions, um, you know, that, you know, we're kind of everyone or you know one key question to to really ask your organization is you know how does your organization stop um, stop breach attempts today so you know um, you know what we're, what we're looking to do is just look you, you know uh, we're taking our examples of our customers you know and, uh, you know we've got an electrical utility here you know it's blocked over 300 malicious connections in 30 days um, including 25 uh, command and control communications with Cisco umbrella that's a really really key thing here looking at how do we prevent against um, ransomware in that case you know uh, you know especially with command of control traffic but you know of course you know we've got our regional hospitals as well you know they deployed across 9,000 machines in only three and a half hours um, and of course that stopped the ransomware attacks progress with Cisco AMP for endpoints really really key um, key uh, solution there so when a critical security event happens how does your organization react so soon to be a headline or soon to be promoted so you know why wasn't this stopped um, why can't we do anything or why don't we have the answers that really, you know, our things are always said, you know, when, when things go wrong. But, you know, soon to be promoted, the ideal world is, you know, we want the ability to say, no, we're in control. You know, this is this is what we've done within our environment. So how many people in your organization are responsible for breach defense? You know, uh, who, you know, who, who, who is responsible in, you know, in, you know, looking at security today, we've got our CISO, we've got network security teams, we've got our endpoint security teams, our email security teams, security architect team, the security operations, and of course, incidents response as well. So, you know, a large enterprise or large public sector, this team will be within, you know, the, the entire kind of operation will be between 10 and 200 people. And, and even small or, or suppose uh, SME or, or small public sector it could be one to two people, but they still have to share the or they still have to share or hold all of these responsibilities because they're all key components. So, look, you know, breach, you know, what, what is I suppose what is a breach, of, of course, you know, an attacker that gains access to device or data. And, you know, breach defense, of course, is looking at how do we, you know, how do we prevent against that or how do we protect against that? you know, uh, our, you know, our minute by minute or, you know, hour by hour finish line, ensuring that we are protecting or keep your organization protected, um, you know, constantly. So, of course, breach defense equals blocking, of course. But, you know, how do you gain control? You know, what, what, you know what's required there to, to, you know, to have that control as such? So, let's stimulate, in, you know, sorry, simulate an incident. Tuesday morning at 7:43 a.m. You know, you know, you've just got a message from your, you know, you've got nine missed calls and 17 messages from your CEO. And here, of course, you know, your CEO is saying DNSBNRG, you know, uh, know about this. You know, are we good? And of course, you know, we'll say, okay, on it, hang tight. So how, you know, what are we going to do from this point? You know, what, you know, what, what do we do? You know, which teams do we have to engage in this point? You know, uh, you know, what, you know, who do we go to? You know, we've got to go to all of these teams to kind of, you know, get visibility, I suppose. So breach defense equals blocking, you know, and, and essentially, of course, you know, the one thing that we have to do is then, you know, say, okay, then, you know, to, in order to, to kind of research that and you know, that's this specific attack or DNS spionage. You know, the first thing that we might do is go to Google, you know, throw it in and say, okay, you know, what can we see around DNS spionage? And we will say, okay, well, DNS spionage, you know, what? You know, what is it? You know, we've got so many URLs there, of course, from from Google that we, you know, we might have to, to kind of look in, you know, delve in further to understand, you know, you know, what, you know, what each kind of, um, each kind of research team is saying about it. Of course, you know, we take, you know, took Talos, for example, you know, we need to study multiple blog posts. Um, so, take, of course, as a, you know, Talos just being an example, you know, there's so much that we need to know about it. But, you know, of course, obviously, there, you know, we, we have, you know, we, there's, there's threat intelligence there that, you know, we could then say, okay, you know, we can use this. But again, we, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of finding this information. But can, you know, what do you do? 
information, I suppose, you know, you've got to get, you know, you've got to go to all of your tools and, you know, have a look for all of these kind of IOCs as such. You know, you might have to go to, to your firewalls and then, and then, you know, to then your, your endpoint security to then, you you know, looking at your, your kind of web protection, you know, we have so many consoles here, um, which will then, you know, give you multiple opinions from all of your different teams. So then what do you do? You know, you, you sat there for, for kind of hours or then days and then months on end, um, you know, figuring out, you know, is this really a thing within our organization? You know, as, as the guy is doing there, you know, he's banging his head, you know, against a computer trying to figure out, you know, is this a thing within our environment? You know, what we really want to do is, is have the ability to very quickly, you know, say, you know, do we have this issue within the environment? But in order to do that, of course, we need to put things in the middle between breach defense equals blocking. You know, there are there are some other key components. Time is definitely key one. Expertise is another and evidence is one other as well. You know, these three components plus blocking make up breach defense. The time being, you know, how quickly can you find out this information? How quickly can you respond to this? The expertise, of course, you know, which teams um, can go in and, and, you know, help solve the issue if there is an incident, of course. But then the evidence, you need to look at all of your consoles to show you and, and prove to you that this is genuinely an issue within the environment. Or actually, you know, if it isn't an issue in the environment, you know that's, a, that's also a key thing so you know our challenges here you know I suppose you know what you know one key challenge is, is give my team um, you know time back and, and help us work far, uh, together faster you know the expertise of course you know my team can't be experts in everything you know give us the answers at our fingertips but as well as the evidence of course you know you can't dig for answers you can't be there looking for logs from days on end you know give us one place to find all the answers across all of our tools so, you know, one of the asks, of course, is we need to immediately improve our breach defense. And, and of course, you know, looking at that, you know, we need to get ahead of the threat. So, you know, how, how do we do that? And of course, you know, our act, actionable threat intelligence forced everywhere from Talos is a key thing to, to solving that. So, of course, you know, Cisco Talos um, is looking at kind of Cisco's greater threat intel and research arm, looking at how do we protect all Cisco security devices, including, you know, uh, including all these tools, you know, to, to empower them with the threat intelligence that we see. So, you know, for example, you know, with Cisco Talos behind our Cisco security solutions, we're backed by the largest non-governmental threat intelligence team in the world. It's a very, very key thing there. But of course, you know, you know that, you know, and we're, you know, we're protect, we're protecting that device just by, you know, I suppose having the kind of latest and greatest threat intelligence. But of course, you know, now we need the tools to enforce and, and you know, uh, you know, enforce a block, sorry, and, and inform your team as well. So we need to get a better, you know, the, the kind of next task is we need to get a better first line of defense. So one key solution from Cisco, of course, is Umbrella, you know, breach defense across the globe deployed in minutes. The very first, you know, line of defense as such, ensuring that we protect your users and devices regardless of, you know, where they are around the world. And we protect them to, you know, for them going out to specific domains or actually specific sites out there on the Internet, ensuring that they're not going to request something malicious. Because, you know, you spotted here that our network security team are coming in, you know, and, and, and here, for example, you know, DNS is built on the foundation of the Internet. So cloud based umbrella protects all of our users. And very, very key thing here. And it's super easy to manage. The next task, of course, is we need an integrated last line of defense. You know, it's a very, very key thing. Of course, you know, here we have a solution called AMP for endpoints. You know, ensure that we replace your standard antivirus to protect the full endpoint attack surface, you know, ensuring that, you know, we protect that device, you know, in terms of our last line of defense. So, of course, you know, here, for example, you know, continuously analyze our 30 day history of endpoint behavior um, to expose any blocked attempts to compromise our devices. You know, very, very key thing there to, to constantly analyze, you know, um, you know, files and, um, and our history, of course, to understand if there is something still malicious on that specific device um, or if it's slipped through. And that, of course, involves your endpoint security team. So the next ask, or, or kind of, you know, that, those kind of breach defense requirements are, are kind of met in that basis. But the next ask, I suppose, is we need comprehensive, we need, sorry, we need comprehensive, um, you know, or we need uh, comprehensive breach defense, sorry. And of course, you know, our breach defense requirements in terms of the comprehensive improvements is email is the number one threat vector. We need to secure it. 
and then of course obviously again you know right at the top there we need to protect all emails against you know or, or you know prevent against spam phishing you know business email compromise and and various other kind of um you know blocked emails i suppose in that basis or any other malicious emails very very key critical thing there so email security, of course, you know, you're layered, you know, you're, you're looking at your kind of your layered threat defense there. And, and of course, this involves your email security team, you know, automatically protecting us against phishing and fraudulent senders, you know, try to compromise our business. Very, very key thing there, you know, ensuring that we protect, again, the number one attack vector. The key or the kind of the second key comprehensive improvement is zero trust. And we need it right now. It's something, you know, critical. And again, zero trust, of course, you know, sits at the bottom, you know, a, a, a trusted access platform for all users and devices and applications, you know, ensuring that that specific user is who they are, you know, ensuring that, you know, it's not someone else that's, that's kind of stolen, stolen credentials. But as well as that, you know, ensuring that we're still protecting the endpoint. Um, and those applications, of course, that you permit, um, you permit access to. So, of course, Duo brings in your security architects. You know, an example here: we protect against credential theft and other uh, and other access threats by verifying the identity of users with strong multi-factor authentication. Very, very key thing. Key thing there. So. And then, of course, you know, moving on, looking at the other next comprehensive improvement, we need to know, you know, what are we missing? It's a very, very key thing. You know, as you say, you can only protect against kind of what you, you know, or suppose you can only protect against what you what you see. Now we need to look at what are we missing? Very, very key thing. And of course, you know, for that, we have stealth watch. Ensure that we monitor east to west traffic flow to detect attacks that get past perimeter defenses. You know, ensuring that we constantly monitor this, tra monitor this traffic, provide you, you know, there's all the data with the anomalies and with useful, you know, information, useful data, you know, providing useful alerting um, and accurate alerting to, you know, to when we spot anomalies and things that don't make sense. Of course, again, that involves your security architect team. And, you know, there, for an example, you know, machine learning and behavioral modeling allows for detections otherwise gone undetected. So we can take we can stay at ahead of the attacks and breaches. Very, very another very, very key thing there. And then, of course, the last ask is, you know, we need all of that integrated and automated. You know, there's, you know, we really, really do need all of these to work together. And therefore, you know, we have Cisco threat response, you know, global answers and actions at your fingertips, which, you know, integrate across all of the Cisco products there. You know, that's something very, very key. Um, and, and, and something that, you know, is, is really useful at, at kind of highlighting everything within these products. What I'm going to do is, is I'm going to pass over to my colleague Senad, who's going to who's going to talk a little bit more about Cisco Threat Response and run you through a little bit of a demo. Okay, can you guys hear me? We can hear you, Senad. Just going to begin. Just going to allow you to share your screen now. So, so let there me go. go to my slides. Okay, so um, let's make as my colleague mentioned. Uh, so hello, by the way, my name is Senad. I'm based in Amsterdam and I'm covering uh, Northern Europe and Turkey for the SecOps team. Uh, mostly uh, coming from, uh, mo mostly doing a lot of threat, threat hunting incident response in the past and now doing a technical process at the Cisco. So uh, what, uh, today I'm going to show you guys some real demo uh, for the CTR. Uh, and then you're going to see how what my colleague just uh, show you guys in the slides how that works in a real life. So uh, the most important thing about the integrated uh, security solutions is like it's not it's not doesn't that okay nobody will going to ask you how many cybersecurity products you have and how they are integrated and how cool they are and how nice they are. Everybody going to ask you what's your time to detect and what's your time to response. Okay, because this is the most important thing that and measures your effectiveness against the zero-day threats or zero-day malware or unknown malware. Cisco Threat Response is included. So basically, if you have any of these cybersecurity solutions from Cisco, so Cisco M4 endpoints, Cisco Threat Grid, Cisco Umbrella, Stealth Watch, Cisco Email Security, or Next Firewall, the CTR is included within the bundle itself. So basically, you don't need to pay for the CTR, okay? Uh, there is a lot of question like, uh, is CTR SIEM, is CTR SOAR? Well, it's a hybrid solution that Cisco built for his own uh, cybersecurity portfolio. It can act like a SOAR, it can act like our own SIEM where he collects and integrates and 
and uh, enrich and correlate all the logs, but it's uh, mostly designed by the Cisco security products. If you have a REST API, if you have a need for to connect the CTR to our SIM solution or your source solution, then you can use a REST API, open REST API connection, and basically you can integrate directly with, uh, with our portfolio. Uh, having said that, uh, you know, rather than uh, connecting all Cisco security portfolio one-to-one -to, -one to your SOAR or SIM, uh, CTR connects all of them in backend, and then basically you speak to the CTR, okay? So it's much easier to speak to one guy, which is speaking in behalf of you to all Cisco portfolio in a backend. So, uh, you know, there is a lot of... Uh, there is a one challenge, okay? The challenge is are we affected, as my colleague said, right? So when something is happening in the world, when there is some outage in the, in the internet, right? So everybody is trying to figure out, are we affected? If we are affected, how we are affected, how bad we are affected, how we can respond faster, et cetera, et cetera, okay? So all these answers can be, uh, can be uh, answered by CTR. And what's the cool thing about the CTR is that even, uh, even your C-level executive can do threat hunting. I mean, he don't need to have, be a expert on forensics and stuff like that. He just can use a CTR plugin, which I'm going to show you. And with a simple click, he can understand if he is affected or not, okay? If you are a threat hunter, incident responder, forensics guy, then you can use other modules that we have within the M4 endpoint, like orbital, like device trajectory, and where you can do a more deep uh, forensics uh, task within the endpoint. CTR is for everybody, okay? Uh, what else? So two, two clicks to the root cause, right? So basically on the CTR, you can search uh, a bunch of IOCs. Uh, you can visualize them, you can correlate them, you can enrich them, and then you can see the root cause, root cause. okay? So basically you can see who executed who, et cetera, et cetera. And then you can take the actions from the same single pane of glass, which I'm going to show you guys. And that's really important for, for fast response. Uh, personally, I implement a CTR in a multiple uh, customers all around the globe, uh, especially for the biggest airport in the world in Istanbul. They are using CTR right now. They are our public reference also. You can check that. Uh, and always when I'm asking their cybersecurity stuff like operation guys, threat hunters, incident responders, and analysts, like, hey, what happened after CTR? They're always telling me like, hey, now we can respond faster and we have a right and power to take actions. Rather than going opening a tickets and emails to block a simple DNS, now we can just right click and block. Same is happening for IP address, for email, for SHA-256, et cetera, et cetera. Or you can isolate a host directly. Okay, so that's really, really important to bring them uh, fast detection and fast response. You remember the DNS espionage? Let me jump to my demo now and I can show you how uh, CTR is taking action in real time. Let me share my Chrome. I hope you guys can see it, right? So basically what CTR does is uh, you go in any block, any white paper, any threat intelligence platform, or you can use even in non-Cisco products. So let's say you have your own SIM solution in place and you are browsing, a, I don't know, a query on SIM and you have a lot of IOCs. So basically you can use this button here to collect all the findings, which I'm going to show you later. So I'm going to open a DNS espionage now. I am reading about this threat, the Cisco Talos detected. If I'm an experienced uh, guy who can understand this kind of stuff, it's perfectly fine. You can read, you can see how the first stage, second stage, how infection is happening and stuff like that. But for myself, it uh, doesn't matter if I am analyst or C-level guy, I have one question. Yeah, I am affected from this or not? Okay, to be able to see that, you go for the indication of the compromises, you copy them, and then you jump to the Cisco threat response. You just pass here, and then you click investigate. So right now, I'm searching 26 indication of compromises. Okay, uh, we all know how much time you need to search only one indication of compromise, especially if you have free cybersecurity solution in place, so you have free GUIs, you need to jump from one GUI to another one, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So after a couple of seconds, I managed to search 26 indication of compromises. And right away, CTR will going to show you if you are affected or not. So luckily in this demo here, I don't have any targets. That means that my endpoints or my, my computers, they are not affected from this one. What else I can see here? 
The most important thing here is that this is what happened on my environment. So as you can see, I don't have this threat in my environment, but I can gl see globally when this DNS espionage hit uh, uh, the, the vulnerable machines around the, around, around the globe, okay? So this is really, really important that you can see what is happening in your environment and what is happening globally. You can call this like external intelligence, what is happening in the world, and internally what is happening on your environment. What else? I have 26 observables, 19 of them are malicious, 7 of them are unknown. Let's jump on DNS, a domain name here as you can see. Uh, now, every single arrow here that you see, it has a context. As you can see, this domain here, resolving to this IP address, etc., etc. So, this domain here contains this URL. So, basically, all these arrows here are, ha are uh, have a context. It shows you what is what, who is who, etc., etc. Later, I'm going to show you how this looks like on, on a malware attack. Basically, I can see what is happening. I don't have nothing on my environment, luckily, but I want to take action. What you can do, actually, you can click here and you can block the domain directly from here. Now, the next IPS is, uh, integration is ready, so basically, you will be able to click here and block IP address, or you can click and block SHA-256, or you can click and block email. Okay. What else you can do? You can drill down from here. If you want to go to uh, Umbrella and to check what uh, um, open DNS umbrella investigate knows about this DNS, about this domain, sorry. So basically you can jump to the umbrella and then you can see, uh, you can see what we know about this domain name, specifically like intelligence, is, is, is this domain name served any malware sample in the past, etc., etc. This is the back-to-back -back integration that you can see, as you can see, this domain here already served multiple uh, malware samples which are here. Okay, so this is uh, this is the uh, Cisco threat response integration for 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 this specific threat. Seven unknown again, a lot of unknown domains which has something to do with this threat. You know, it's okay. You can block them, etc., etc. File five file hashes. So let me jump in one file hash here. Here we go. So this is a file hash. Luckily, it's not in my environment. It's non bad. It's already blocked, but let's say, let's assume that it's unknown, then what you can do, you can block directly from here, okay? So you detect very fast, and you respond only by right-clicking of your mouse. So you don't change GUIs to block SHA-256, to block domain name, to block IP address, and to block email, okay? Free IP address, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So this is the power of CTR for this specific threat. Let me show you another one. Let's go for a... Uh, for a WannaCry, because WannaCry has uh, a hit on my environment, so basically you're going to, uh, I'm going to be able to show you guys uh, an infection. So let me copy the IOCs for WannaCry. I will go for Cisco Touch Response. Hey, CTR, I'm affected or not. I'm clicking Investigate. It will take a couple of seconds. Search 36 indication of the compromises. By the way, if you have, guys have any questions, you can uh, reach out to chat window and then you can come back uh, with the answers or if you want to try, then you can, of course, contact us for our licenses. File 16, ISIS coming. Uh, 33, and I already have two hits. So I'm affected with a WannaCry. I can see right away. That's not good. It's done. So I managed to search 36 ISCs, and right away I can see that two of my machine is already affected by WannaCry ransomware. I want to jump to the affected machine. I'm just clicking the machine name here, and here we go. This is my machine, Windows 10, affected with a WannaCry. You remember I mentioned you all the arrows has a context. Let me show you now. So, as you can see, this unknown SHA-256 is targeting my endpoint here. See, the arrow says target, okay? But what's the cool thing here? The cool thing here, if I want to go to the root cause, I can see that the parent of this unknown SHA-256 is another bad SHA-256, okay? So, as you can see here, it says parent of this file. But who executed this bad, bad, bad SHA-256 
I can see here that is executed by another non-good SHA-256. So this shows a remote code execution, right? So this non-SHA-256 executed a bad one, bad one created an unknown one, and unknown one targeted my endpoint. Okay, so this is the level of details that you can get with a CTR. If you want to go for the affected machine, you can jump directly to device trajectory of this machine. Okay, now I'm going to open a device trajectory where WannaCry is active right now, and I can go back in the time, I can slide back in the time, 30 days, and now here I can see how WannaCry infection is happening. So basically, as you can see here, this non-good file is dropping an unknown files, one, two, three of them, right, which doesn't make sense because LSSX is not creating a files, and then he's executing a file. So this is the anatomy of WannaCry. So if I scroll in the time now, I'm going to see how infection is happening. So he dropped the files, right, and then what he's doing? He's hiding the files, see? So the files that WannaCry dropped, now he's hiding them from the user. What else he's doing next? He's changing the attribution. So he is trying to get read and write permission for every single uh, local hard drive or mounted hard drive on the machine because he will going to start encrypting the files. So he dropped the files, he executed the malware, he hide them, he changed the permission, and look what is happening now. Encrypt move, encrypt move, encrypt move. Now he's encrypting the files. Encrypting and moving. Encrypting and moving, and it's done. So this is all the files that he managed to encrypt. And now what he's doing, he's running Tor, because he needs to exchange the private key with a CNC server for future instruction. Remember, M4 endpoint has a network driver, so we can intercept outbound and inbound, inbound traffic. So the key has been shared here, and now what he's doing? He is deleting the shadow copies here, as you can see. He's making sure that this machine will be not going to be recovered. What else is doing? He is running a famous uh, WannaCry window to ask for a money, which is this one here, you know, the red one, asking a money. And then, if you are getting panicked, right, to click Reset is making sure that the red window asking for money will be put on next reboot of your machine, so that it will be going to be start on the next reboot. So it's doing a persistence, okay, on to, to, into the registry directly. So basically, this is the level of details that you can capture with CTR and using M for endpoint. And same things, you can take action from here. You can block IP addresses. You can you can isolate the endpoint from here, but unfortunately, my connector is not updated here, so you're going to have start isolation, and this endpoint will going to be isolated from your, from your environment. Okay, so this is the level of details that you can see with WannaCry. Last thing, I want to show you guys the email integration. So this is a phishing attack that happened where I sent a phishing uh, email to my corporate email with attachment on it. Okay, guys, this is amazing because you can see the whole phishing attack on one pane of glass like this. So you can see the attacker. So you see I'm targeting, I'm targeting from senadaruk.gmail.com my corporate email. And this email has an attachment. This attachment has an executable. <laughs> and this executable is on this endpoint. Okay, so you can see what kind of integration we have for a very complex phishing attacks. What you can do, same things. Very soon you're going to be able to block the email. You can activate ICE from here. You can kick out the user from Exchange, or you can kick out him from Active Directory and stuff like that. You can click here, you can quarantine the file, and you very soon you're going to be able to click this machine here, you can start isolation. Okay? Very brief and very fast what we can do with the CTR. Last thing, remember I mentioned that you can hire your C-level executive to do threat hunting for yourself? Let me show you that one. So like every other cybersecurity guy, I'm going to Twitter every morning, right? And I'm searching for OpenDIR, uh, which is a nice uh, place uh, to see what people are publishing uh, 
regarding the zero-day findings. As you can see here, some of the individual researchers, he just published some uh, CNC panel, somebody published some zero-day findings about the malware, right? I'm reading the news, right? You are just reading a news about the zero-day malware, zero-day findings, attacks, etc., etc. This can be anything, right? I'm just scrolling right now on the Twitter, right? I am a C-level executive. I know only Twitter. I know only that the threats are there. I can see them. I can read them. Excellent. And now I'm asking myself, hey, is, is my company affected from these threats that I just read? What I need to do? I just click the button here. I'm telling, hey, CTR, find me all the IOCs from the news on the Twitter that I just read. I click investigate. And now I just, so I basically I grabbed 19 indication of the compromises. I'm searching on my environment. After a couple of seconds, I am not affected. Okay, so this is the power of, uh, of CTR uh, working together within all of, of our architecture. Uh, any question, guys? So guys, of course, um, you know, any other questions that you've got, you know, you want answering, of course, you know, do drop them into the um, Q&A panel. Um, myself, um, Senad and, and Yusuf are kind of monitoring the chat and looking at some of the questions that are coming in. Um, but I, I do hope that was that, that I do hope that was useful for you guys. Um, and and, it, and and I hope it kind of shows you the, the kind of the power of such of, of Cisco threat response and, all, you know, tied in with our, you know, with our Cisco security products. But uh, thank you for joining uh, our webinar today. But yeah, we'll keep the webinar um, open for a little bit, open uh, just to answer some Q&A. Um, but uh, I do hope you enjoy the rest of your day.